today we're taking a closer look at mark making and why it's important and fun uh, and something that you can have a go at, at home with your child. So I think a lot of people automatically head towards uh, crayons and paint and pencils and those kind of things to initiate mark making with their child. And they're really great fun, but there are also lots of other ways that you can integrate it into your child's learning. So we're going to have a closer look at some of those now. So mark making is a really great skill for teaching fine motor skills, but it also helps to teach children about cause and effect in that when they make a mark in something, they can see that they did it and they made that happen. Um, so you'll often find in shops and places like that that you can get um, special tools that have got different textures and things on them. Um, you've got sponges and stamps and these are really nice ones because they've got a big handle on you can just sort of splat it down. Um, stampers with chunky handles as well are really good. Um, but you could also use things like Play-Doh. So having your Play-Doh, your child can help you to squash it down and then they can have a go with all kinds of tools to make lots of marks, to dab, um, and just start to use those fine motor skills um, or even that big grip if that's more suitable for them. So we're just going to have a look at a few alternative ideas that you might like to have a go at now uh, and along the way we'll give you a few tips on how you might like to adapt some of the activities to more suit your child's needs. So one of the first tips is that if you have a child with a visual impairment you'll quite often find that they're attracted to a specific colour um, and if you get some tape in that colour you can use it to kind of highlight their workspace so that they can try and keep themselves contained. Obviously in the early stages they kind of want to go a bit wild and kind of you'd probably give them bigger sheets of paper than this, but just for demonstration purposes. Um, ours is angled up, it's on a lid, um, just to be able so you can see it, but you might find that actually elevating it for your child might help them as well. So have a play with it. So obviously for some children, holding pens and pencils might be too difficult. So this is a really fun idea that I've just attached a pen to the back of a push along animal, but you could use cars or whatever. And then as they manage to push it along, it will draw the lines on the page and they can kind of go up and down and just have as much fun and obviously you know they could be pushing that along with the hold of their hand if that's what they can do. So if holding tools isn't an option then you can also look at wrapping things around your child's hand. So I've just got a hairband here on some bubble wrap which obviously you could use a nice soft um, bubble if you've got one this was just an elastic one that I had um, and you could do this with a range of things this is bubble wrap but I've also got some tin foil here some kitchen roll which would give a nice texture that again you could just wrap it around and just help it to stay on with a, a hair bubble and then they can have some fun dipping their hand into the paint and then they can just So another thing that I found really useful to help adapt uh, for children who struggle with that grasp and to pick up smaller objects is the sandwich bag clips and um, you can get them in different sizes so this is quite a long one um, whereas that one's a little bit shorter so again depends on the size of your child's hands but they're just really great for attaching stuff into the bottom that they can use for stamping so this one here has got some cotton wool in it and this one's got some tin foil and then that child can use that um, full hand grip um, instead of having to pick the things up with a pincer grip and then they can just dab it into the paint and again have some fun stamping away. So as well as the standard paintbrushes and sponges and stampers that you can buy as specialist art and craft type things you can also just use objects that you find around your home. So these are just some kitchen utensils that they can just splodge in the paint and then oops sorry have a go at, at uh, making the marks and seeing what they'll do on the paper so that one's a spatula we've got a masher and you can just see that they can get some really nice patterns um, onto the paper there as well so this one's a whisk that they can make a really nice mess with and they can just splodge it around and bash it and just make a load of mess so some children just prefer to not be using paint and messy things like that and they prefer to use drier uh, items for doing their mark making. So you can use things like rice and pasta. These are just some black beans um, that your child can kind of just practice those marks, doing a cross, 
doing down um, and they can have a go at making their own marks in there without getting all of that muck onto their hand as well so that's just a really nice way as well to experience mark making so this is just a sandwich bag with some paint and I've just sealed it nice and tight at the top um, but this is a really nice one for just using your finger or you can even use your hands and have a go at making some marks in the paint you can also add in some more tools to it um, so you could use like a felt tip pen just with the lid on um, and they could have a go at writing some letters into the bag or just doing some shapes and lines um, and then if your child's also working on that really fine pincer grip then they can actually try and use a cotton bud and you can get some really nice detailed marks in the bag.